Good morning. Welcome to worship today. Beautiful day out there. Hopefully you're having a wonderful weekend. Just a couple of announcements this morning for you. Uh, really, uh, the first one's a uh, thank you. A legacy of Learning happened last night. Legacy Live, if you will. And uh, we just want to thank you for your support in, in all the, the silent auction in the event itself last night. A lot of fun, a lot of activities. If uh, some of you remember, we had a $70,000 goal. And again, this is all toward financial aid to help students currently in our school and new students coming into our school. And we had a goal of 70,000, we passed that. And so we, we reset to a, a goal of 75 and uh, we're creeping in on that. So if you wanna help close that gap, I believe there's about $1,200 short. But again, we, we're past that first goal, shooting for a second one. And I just wanna thank you for, again, all the families that will be impacted uh, in financial aid because of your support and, and again the generosity of our community and, and beyond so just a great event yesterday um, if you won on any of those items we're not ready for it today but um, throughout this week if you want to stop by the office nine to four uh, you can pick up items that you you won if you will uh, as well next weekend between services so whatever is most convenient for you we'll get that all ready for you and we'll get you matched up um, just as kind of a, a fun, we've got a couple of, of uh, different music intros, if you will, today. Uh, we have a little bit of, of drum beats from some students just to have some fun as we celebrate the school this weekend. some fun adapting right you don't have drum sets for everyone you you grab a bucket have some fun we have a marching band now um, they'll be marching through one of these days soon but so just having some fun we'll have a little more music later on too but again the students uh, having fun this year as they adapt to the the context of the year and again our legacy learning is all about the students and and reaching out and connecting with their families and uh, opening up some extra doors so again thank you for that just a couple of other things, actually, I guess one other announcement only. Um, Pastor Duncan's installation is next, I gotta check my dates. It is next Sunday, right? April 25th, uh, next Sunday, one o'clock. So again, I encourage you to be a part of worship in the morning. Uh, he and his family will be around and will be uh, introduced next weekend as well. Installation one o'clock in the afternoon. I encourage you to be here. It will be live streamed. So if you can't make it back, um, you do have that option. But again, I encourage you to come on out, uh, say hi, meet his family and uh, welcome him as they arrive. And they are, I believe, officially in Waconia area now um, this weekend, kind of hanging out, doing um, some settling in, if you will, and uh, we'll be starting to be around here in the next few days and into next weekend. Uh, so with that, let's uh, stand, and we get to celebrate this morning. We get to worship, we get to praise God, who is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing together, Alleluia, 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 as we again are in this Easter season and celebrating that resurrection power alive in us.
invite you this morning to join me in a time of confession as we share in this responsive. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we're gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated. We get, had fourth graders on, on bucket drums this morning. We have fifth graders on, I think it is ukuleles, if I remember right. And uh, so this is actually going to be Amazing Grace, and you'll hear Mrs. Marlette uh, singing along. We invite you to, to join in and sing this morning. Again, the fifth graders. We'll have to see if we can crank that up. But uh, way to whisper, sing. That was very nice. Everyone's kind of, you sang, but you kept it low so we didn't override the ukuleles. Very nice. <laughs> so this morning for our scripture, we're going to start in Psalm 4. And again, we're in a, a series of miraculous, taking a look at, at some of the miraculous events throughout scripture and in our own lives. And Psalm 4 is sort of that, that cry out uh, in prayer. Answer me when I call, God, who vindicates me. You freed me from affliction. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, exalted ones, will my honor be insulted? How long will you love what is worthless and pursue a lie? Know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord will hear when I call to him. Be angry and do not sin. On your bed reflect in your heart and be still. Offer sacrifices in righteousness and trust in the Lord. Many are asking, who can show us anything good? Let the light of your face shine on us, Lord. You have put more joy in my heart 
than they have when their grain and new wine abound. And I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, Lord, make me live in safety. As well, we're going to jump into Acts 3 again, looking at the, the early church a little bit as we walk through this Easter season. In Acts 3, verses 1 to 16, we, we see a, a great opportunity here to again uh, celebrate. And so, dear friends, oh, excuse me, I'm in the wrong. That's called Second Peter. We'll be talking about that in a little bit. There we go. Acts 3. I was going to say there's supposed to be a healing here, and there is no healing in that one. So again, Acts 3, from 1 to 16, we're going to see this, this great healing and celebration. Now, Peter and John were going up to the temple for the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. And a man who was lame from birth was being carried there. And he was placed each day at the temple gate called Beautiful, so that he could beg from those entering the temple. And when he saw Peter and John about to enter the temple, he asked for money. And Peter, along with John, looked straight at him and said, Look at us. So he turned to them, expecting to get something from them. But Peter said, I don't have silver or gold, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. Then taking him by the right hand, he raised him up, and at once his feet and ankles became strong. So he jumped up and started to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising, and they recognized that he was the one who used to sit and beg at the beautiful gate of the temple. So they were filled with awe and astonishment at what had happened to him. While he was holding on to Peter and John, all the people, utterly astonished, ran toward them in what is called Solomon's Colonnade. And when Peter saw this, he addressed the people. Fellow Israelites, why are you amazed at this? Why do you stare at us as though we made him walk by our own power or godliness? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom he handed over and denied before Pilate, though he had decided to release him. He denied the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer released to you. You killed the source of life whom God raised from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in his name, his name has made this man strong, whom you see and know. So the faith that comes through Jesus has given him this perfect health in front of all of you. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to rise as we prepare for our gospel this morning. gospel this morning according to St. Mark from the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. We begin at Mark 21 as we again see more miraculous power in action. When Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the sea. And one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, my little daughter is dying. Come and lay your hands on her so that she can get well and live. So Jesus went with him, and a large crowd was following and pressing against him. Now a woman suffering from bleeding for 12 years had endured much under many doctors, and she had spent everything she had and was not helped at all. On the contrary, she became worse. Having heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his clothing, for she said, if I touch his clothes, I'll be made well. And instantly her flow of blood ceased, and she sensed in her body that she was healed of her affliction. And at once, Jesus realized in himself that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? 
His disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing against you, and yet you say, Who touched me? But he was looking around to see who had done this. The woman, with fear and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell before him and told him the whole truth. Daughter, he said to her, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be healed from your affliction. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's join together in the, the words of the Apostles' Creed this morning, professing ultimately our faith, but professing the, the faith of the, the Christian church as we see God revealed to us, and we get to celebrate that. Let's join together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we sing together. Let's join together in prayer. Lord God, you do reveal yourself as the, the great healer. You show yourself in incredible ways throughout history. And Lord, you continue to, to do it in, in our own lives today. We see your healing. We see your power. 
Well, Lord, today, uh, help us as we, as we dig in, as we talk about this miraculous power and healing, Lord, and as we uh, seek your wisdom, and as we certainly seek to have our eyes open to, to who you are and, and how you are working each day in our lives. Bless us in our time together. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, again, this weekend is our, our second weekend in this series, Miraculous. Pastor Ted, as he was wrapping up his time with us last weekend, kicked us off and, and kind of put on, down that ground level, if you will, that, that as we think about miraculous power, we look to God as the, the creator, the one who's created everything, the one who has put everything into motion, the one who provides for us and continues to take care of us. And, and ultimately, as we saw last week with Jesus out on the, the stormy waters in the boat with his disciples, God still has power over creation. You know, the winds and the, when the waves obey the words of Jesus, it's this sign of, again, who he is, but also God's power. As we think about miraculous power, if you will, miraculous moments, you might say, um, we don't always think of every one of them maybe as a miracle, and, and maybe we'll kind of um, change our mind a little bit over the next few weeks, but we see these miraculous moments throughout Scripture, and we see them all over the place, we see them in a lot of different times, in a lot of different ways, if you will. And so through April here in May, we're going to be taking a look at, at a number of these different moments. And we're going to be looking at some in the, the Old Testament, some in the New Testament, some at the hands of Jesus, and some not at, at his hands, if you will. And we're going to see really in the, the big picture that this, this power, this presence of God, it, it transcends the entirety of Scripture. In fact, it transcends the entirety of time. It's a part of who he is. So this miraculous nature, this power, this, this presence, this strength, this, this control, if you will, and, and, and uh, almightiness isn't just kind of the small part off in the corner. It's, it's a core part of who God is and how he works in our lives and how he works in the, the world around us still today. And so this morning we already heard a couple of immediate instances, if you will, two of them of this instantaneous physical healing. And if you keep going in Mark 5, you'd notice that Jesus would get to Jairus' house and he would restore Jairus' daughter instantly. It's a pretty incredible moment and pretty incredible experience, if you will, to, to imagine that, that feeling, that moment of knowing. And as you think of Jesus' ministry, just kind of on this, this broad scope, you think of his ministry over those three years, especially that public ministry, he did a lot of healing. He restored a lot of bodies. And as you think of the, the context, if you will, a lot of those people who he healed had been struggling for a long time. Some of them had been shorter. Even Jairus' daughter, for example, or, or others had been sort of more, more quick experiences. But a lot of them had been long time suffering. And as we look at that, I think many of us and many of you, as, as we think about our own lives and the people around you, many of us can relate. Maybe you've had that season of suffering. And maybe you've gotten to experience healing. And maybe you're still waiting for healing. And in fact, some of us have lost loved ones who are still waiting for that healing. And so today, as we think about this miraculous nature, as we talk about, about healing, especially in that, that idea of that long suffering that, that sometimes happens in life, I want to take a look at it from a couple. And we can go a lot of different ways, and there's a lot to unpack, and we can't get it all in one day. And so we'll kind of spread it out throughout the series in some ways. But I want to take a look at, especially healing, how and when. How does it happen, and when does it happen? And there's no quick and easy answers, but we're going to see what, what Scripture tells us as we dig into to some of these experiences. First, I want to kind of recognize this perspective. And it's a crit critical perspective as we think about how God is miraculous and what he's up to. And again, maybe you noticed um, not only did these experiences, the, the man who had been struggling since childbirth, the, the woman who had been struggling for 12 years, those are our long suffering, you might say. And that's part of, if you notice the title of the message in the, in the bulletin this morning, it's, it's healing after long suffering because it's kind of what happened. But at the same time, that idea of long suffering is, is actually connotative of God as well. And so I want to start there and sort of give us some perspective on that. And that comes to, to 2 Peter, which I was just so eager to read. I almost got into it a, a few minutes ago. But 2 Peter chapter 3, in uh, verse 8 and 9, it says, Dear friends, don't overlook this one fact. With the Lord, 
One day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. So that's part of it. So God's timing and timeline is very different than us. But Peter goes on, The Lord does not delay his promise, as some understand delay, but is patient with you. And King James, I don't read a lot of King James, but some of you guys are very familiar with it. You grew up on it, right? And, and it's fun to go back to sometimes. That captures that word of long-suffering. God is long-suffering with us, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. See, God's timing is different than our timing. And we forget that. We're time-driven. It's part of who we are. It's our culture. It's our nation. It's, in some ways, it's the world, but a lot of parts of the world aren't as time-driven. It really is part of who we are, as Americans especially. And so God has a different timing in, in life. But as you think about patience, God is patient with us. And we may not always like that, but he is. He's patient with us in our suffering He's patient with us in our, our lack of faithfulness as we continue to stumble. He is long-suffering and patient with us. As we think of Jesus himself, he was patient in his own suffering, enduring what he needed to endure. And so God has this, this patience and this timing and this long-suffering nature, if you will, but those last words from Peter are really what I want to capture this morning as we think about that is why not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. See, God's timing is a little bit different, but also his motive is all about relationship with people. See, his motive in life, as he looks down on our lives, he doesn't have the same time, but he's looking at relationships. And ultimately, you might recapture that the God is really all about kingdom growth. He's about growing his kingdom, stronger faith, new faith, ultimately people coming to know him. Less people, as Peter says, perishing, less people dying without knowing him. And that's God's perspective on a lot of life. It's, it's God's perspective on a lot of things that we wonder about and that we wrestle with in life. And, and ultimately, it's, it's a core of, of who he is, and it's a core of how he approaches things, and, and it's how he invites us to approach life as well. He's going to be looking at kingdom growth as he looks at our own lives and our own faith, as he looks at, at our lives and the way that they impact other people, as he looks at the church as, as his people. How is it impacting the kingdom of God? How is it impacting relationships with God beyond ourselves, but the people around us as well? So kingdom growth is, is core to this power that God uses. And so kind of keeping that perspective, that lens, if you will, I want to jump into Mark 5 because, again, as you think of Mark 5, we probably heard this account a few times in our lives. Jesus is walking with his disciples. He's, he's heading to Jairus' house. You imagine the crowds kind of bumping in around him. If you're an introvert and you like your space, it's not your place, right? It's definitely not socially distancing, right? It is just a crowd pushing in, everyone bumping into Jesus. And he's just kind of pushing through almost and, and making his way. And he's going to get to Jairus' house, but, but people are all around him. And in the midst of that crowd, you have this woman who's been suffering, long suffering, 12 years of suffering. She has, has tried visiting different doctors. She's spent every cent she has. She is, you might say, uh, you kind of take the assumption here, you, that she is broke and she is desperate and, and she wants healing. And she's heard about Jesus. Probably doesn't know much, but she's heard about Jesus. And she's heard about some of the miracles that he has had, especially the healing miracles. And again, he healed many people, and those stories would spread. So she's heard about him. And in that morning or in that day, she is desperate, and she is, she is eager, and she's proactive. And so she gets into this crowd, and she, you can kind of imagine it pushes through the crowd, which takes effort. It's hard. You, you push through the crowd, and all she wants to do is touch his clothing. If I can just touch his clothing, if I can just be that close to him, Maybe this power that I've, I've heard about will change me. And it does. I mean, in an instant, in this moment, she knows it. And if you've had that instant in your life where you're praying and you're seeking healing, you just kind of know something's happening. She knew it was happening. And Jesus knew it was happening. 
And so in that moment, it's almost this picture, I think, of, of the definition of a miracle. You know, if you want to say, what's a miracle? This instantaneous change, this, this healing, it's what she got to experience. She gets up there, touches him, and everything's changed. And so in that moment, though, you go back to that, that how and when, you start to kind of get little bits of the puzzle of how this happens, if you will. And you look at her experience in Mark 5, and the how, if you will, how does this miracle happen? It's all about faith. It's all surrounded in faith. You get an element of it in her faith. And so we're going to jump to Mark 5. Here, let me just kind of share verse 34, because Jesus captures it nice and simply. Daughter, he said to her, your faith has saved you. Not just healed you. Right? So often healing is so much more than just the head body. So much more. You can tell that, that her life is changed, has saved you. Go in peace and be healed from your affliction. Faith is at the center of it. And part of that faith at the center is her faith and the growing of her faith, and the strengthening of her faith, and the, this new faith that she's going to now walk in and, and experience and be grounded in because of this incredible moment that she will never forget. But Jesus is also thinking about the people around her. Imagine the impact on all those people who, again, would see her and hear this story and would know what happened. See, Jesus is also concerned about the present faith and the future faith. It's the kingdom growth. So yeah, you think about Acts 3. We're going to get there in just a moment, but kind of a, a snapshot from Acts 3 again. You get the, the man who is healed in verse 16. I just love this, the last verse that I read earlier. It's such a synopsis. By faith in his name, his name has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And I'd say the same is true in the experience of the woman in Mark 5. So the faith that comes through Jesus has given him this perfect health, in front of all of you. Right, at the center of both of these experiences is faith. Growing the kingdom. Stronger faith. New faith. People coming to know God for who he really is. And we're going to see that ultimately in all the miracles. But as you think of healing miracles, it is almost always right at the heart of it. And so you got some of that how, and that shouldn't surprise us in a lot of ways. I think we, we kind of know that. But just to ground us, it happens by faith. Not always the person's faith, and we're going to see that, but faith is always at the core of it. But the other part is, when does it happen? So you think about this woman, I think her experience says it happens when we ask for it, when we pray for it, when we seek it out. See, again, this woman was, was proactive. She was not shy. She didn't just sit in the corners and hope Jesus would notice her or come find her. She went to him. She pushed through the crowd. She made that effort. She was going to seek it out. She was driven. As you think about Jairus, he comes to Jesus. He seeks him out. I mean, he comes up with those, those just kind of crushing words. As a parent, you hear those words, my little daughter is dying. Come and lay your hands on her so she will be well and live. He trusts. He has this faith that if you will just come, if you'll just touch her, if you'll just say the word, I know that's enough. And we see that it is. We didn't get that far in Mark 5, but Jesus does. He goes and, and he, again, restores her. It's right there. I'd venture to say you've seen it in your own life. Prayers answered, maybe kind of instantly, maybe not. But prayers of healing answered. We seek it. We, we call out for it. We cry for it. And, and you know, this woman and, and Jairus and so many others point us to God as the one who heals, the one who has the power to heal, the one who is able to. And so we're encouraged. If we have struggles, if we need healing, if people in our lives need healing, pray about it. Don't stop. Don't give up. Keep praying. Seek it out. He does still heal. Which brings us to a, a sort of a second when. You know, you think of, of again, Mark 5 with the woman and, and Jairus' daughter, but what about Acts 3? See, in Acts 3, Peter and John 
go up to this man, and, and again, he's placed there, if you will, every day. He can't make his way there, and so he's totally reliant on other people, and for years they have, have put him there so he can beg at the gate, and he's sitting there just asking for money like he does to every person going by. I mean, let's be blunt. He's not asking for healing. He's not seeking it out. I'm guessing he's asked for it, and he's prayed about it, and he's thought about it, and he's wanted it, but in the moment, he's not really seeking it out. And Peter and John go past him, and they stop, and again, they have this interaction with him, and you get this incredible moment where everything changes. Picking up in verse 4, again, he asks for money. Peter, along with John, looks straight at him. I love it. Look at us, they say. And the guy's thinking, okay, I'm, I'm ready to, to grab whatever coins or whatever you're going you're gonna to give me. I mean, that's what he's expecting. And so he turned to them, expecting that. But Peter said, I don't have silver or gold, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. Instantly, this man's life has changed. Instantly, this man is healed. He didn't ask for it. He didn't seek it out. See, I think the reality is sometimes that happens, and sometimes we experience healing just going about our day. Just sitting there, asking, just say he does for every day. Nothing's different that day. And sometimes as we're just going about our lives, God almost surprises us with healing. He knows the brokenness. He knows the pain. He knows what we need. And he just meets us in that moment. And that can make us kind of wonder sometimes. And we may not like to say this, but I think it's true. Sometimes people who aren't asking for it, people who have no faith and are not looking at God in any way, shape, or form, have incredible healing moments. And we might ask ourselves, why them? And we're kind of left hanging a little, aren't we? And at the same time, we have those moments in our lives where we're not asking, but we get it as well. But as we think of those moments, maybe where we can't explain it, and we wonder why, guess where it brings us back to? Back to God's perspective. Back to kingdom growth. I have no doubt in the moment of that person's healing, God is hoping, God is working, that maybe they will notice him in this experience. Maybe this will be the turn, again, that, that will draw them in, that he is impacting their life. He's impacting the lives of the people around them. He is seeking to grow faith, new and stronger. And we might wonder why certain things, but ultimately, I think it all comes back to his perspective. He's working in this bigger picture of seeking people, of seeking relationships. And so sometimes the healing Maybe we can't really explain it. It happens. They didn't even ask for it. They weren't looking for it. They're not praying for it. They don't, they don't even see God in the, the picture of life. And they have this moment. And we pray something comes out of it. Even in our own lives, we may not be asking for it, but things happen. And God is working on us too. But this brings us to sort of that, this third when, if you will. You've got the times when we ask for it. You've got the times when we're just kind of going about our day. And then you have the times when healing never happens. When the healing just never comes. And we've all seen it. And we've experienced it in maybe some ways close to us. And maybe you're in it right now, waiting for this healing to come. And I think especially after Easter, it's right here in front of us. Part of the reality is to grab hold of and to never let go of the fact that God, in the resurrection of Jesus, has secured us this future. And we may not experience miraculous healing here on this earth, but ultimately that miraculous healing is always going to be ours in heaven. I'd say we're all going to be healed in the end. We want it now, but we have to hang on to that reality. And so as we think of those even who, we, who have passed away waiting, we know they've been able to experience it. They've had that healing in faith. On the other side, if it was, they meet Jesus, there it is. They are healed. We have to cling on to that. It's easy to forget it. It's easy to, to let that go. But, but that is such a core piece of our faith that, that whatever happens in this life, we always have that. But it still leaves us with the question, 
I have almost two questions. Why so long now? Why am I suffering or the person I care about is suffering so long? And why do some people receive that healing and some don't? Why does God leave us unhealed when he can heal us? And let's be honest, we don't have an answer. There is no perfect answer. But there is a perspective. And I think God invites us back to his perspective. Our experience might be exactly what someone else needs to turn toward him, to come to know him. And as we walk this life and we walk this life in our faith, we are going to experience struggles and sometimes suffering and sometimes long suffering and sometimes those unanswered prayers, kind of sort of this side of heaven, if you will, And it seems like he's leaving us, but in fact, again, it's all that bigger picture. And you know, one of the the beautiful moments, uh, kind of on this side of ministry, if you will, is getting to walk alongside people and to know people who take on his experience or his perspective. And I know there are folks in our community, both Trinity and just in our community and and far beyond, who are are in the midst of battling right now, who are in the midst of, of suffering right now, who have truly taken on God's perspective. They see him at work, even in their suffering. They see what he's doing. They know he's he's doing things they don't even get to see. And even though they, they, they know that they keep praying for healing, and they should, we're encouraged to, they keep praying for healing, but they cling on to that ultimate healing in the end, no matter what happens here on earth. And really, that is a beautiful picture of faith. And a beautiful picture of trusting God as the one who is the healer. But it's a challenging experience. But when you see it, it encourages you. When you see it, you see again what God is doing through the lives of people and ultimately through our lives as well. And so sometimes that healing doesn't come. Or it doesn't come when we want it. And we want to know why. And we know what we may never get quite the answer but we're always invited to take on God's perspective. What's he doing beyond me? What's he doing in other people's lives? Uh, Analogies are a little dangerous, so I say this carefully because I don't want to belittle any experience of of suffering, but as I was wrestling through this the last couple weeks, the the analogy of parenting kind of just keeps coming back to mind for me, and maybe that's because I'm in the the messy world of it right now with, with three kids relatively young, but as a parent, you never want your kids to suffer. Right? You, you would save your kids from every suffering if you could. Just make life kind of a, a wonderful in that way. But you know you can't. And in fact, I think as a parent, you know you shouldn't. Some of the things that you've gone through, some of the things that I've gone through have defined us, they've shaped us, they've matured us, they, they've made us who we are, they've, they've grown us in certain ways. And we know that our kids need that as well. And so we need to allow them to, to experience certain things. They need that. God as our Father, I think, would love to spare us from every suffering. That was the original intention. But he knows that good can come out of our struggles. Good in our lives and good in the lives of the people around us. And in the end, as hard as it is for us to grasp, God allows us to walk certain paths for the good of his kingdom. For the good of faith, not only ours, but the faith of other people. And he allows us to experience and he allows us to go through challenges because he sees the eternal impact. He sees the big picture. And we keep praying for that healing and we keep enduring and we keep pressing forward. But but again, we lean into his big picture in it all. And as I think about healing, as I think about miraculous nature of God... He invites us in our lives every day, wherever we're at in our own experiences and whatever may lay ahead, he invites us to take on that perspective. To know that he has the power to heal. He's done it. He's done it countless times throughout history, and he's done it in our own lives. He has the power. And so we keep praying, and we keep seeking, and we keep asking. But we also know that he may bring healing 
and he may not. And if it's not here on earth, he will still bring it in heaven. And so we walk with confidence. And we walk knowing that whether it is then or whether it's now, it's all about the good of the kingdom. It's all about the good, not only of us, but of all those around us. And so we live with that same perspective. We live with our eyes open, seeing all that he is doing every day, all the miracles, the big and the small. We keep praying when we need it. We keep praying for each other. And ultimately, we get to keep watching him grow his kingdom, using our lives to impact the lives around us as well. And in the end, we have that security. We have that hope, this resurrection hope of Jesus that we get to celebrate in Easter and year-round that one day it will all be healed. We will all be healed. And it's all because of him. Let's pray. Lord God, this morning we thank you for your healing power. The way that you have healed throughout time, the way that you've made yourself known in the lives of of people in our lives, in our own lives, and people we've never known and never gotten to meet, but you have changed their lives. Lord, you brought healing in so many ways, in so many places. Lord, help us in our own moments to turn to you, to trust in you. Lord, to again, see through your eyes, to take on your perspective as we journey through this life. Bless us and strengthen us as we go as your disciples. And certainly give us your your boldness each day as we walk with you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Again, thank you for joining us this morning. You've got a couple of opportunities here. Please do check in either on, on the app, especially if you're at home or even on site here. Pull out your phone quick and put it away. All right. Just click the app quick. It's nice and fast. Um, check in on the sheets in front of you. Again, thank you for your, your support with uh, Legacy of Learning. Thank you for your support in, in tithes and offerings throughout um, this journey. It's been uh, an amazing year in a lot of ways, and, and we again are, are walking together through this season um, I just wanted to share a quick uh, call update as well, if you will. Um, Sarah and I were able to get to Ohio this week, so I just want to invite you to continue praying for us. We're wrestling through a, a lot um, in the moment, just kind of watching what God is up to and, and kind of seeking his discernment and still that clarity is the word, seeking God's clarity um, to make things a little muddier, which God seems to like to do in my life. Um, I was extended another call this week to a lead pastor in Michigan, in Jackson, Michigan, at a, a Trinity Lutheran Ministries. And so, again, God has a, a habit of doing two in my life every time. Um, I'm not sure why. We'll talk about that someday in heaven. But um, so I just encourage you to continue certainly praying for us, and um, we just seek his clarity and discernment in the, the days ahead here. But uh, let's, let's stand together. It's probably prayer next, and I don't have my prayer sheet. So I'm used to having Pastor Ted or someone coming out behind me. We again encourage you to grab a prayer sheet in the lobby or prayer sheet as well uh, online up there under the, the Watch Live page. Lots to pray for. Let's join together in prayer together. Heavenly Father, we are again are humbled at, at who you are. Humbled at your power, your creativity. Lord, the way that you care for us, provide for us. Lord, the way that not only do you bring healing into our lives in the moment, but Lord, you've secured us healing forever with you. We thank you for the hope that brings to us. We thank you for the, the peace that brings to us as we, we think of those who have, who have died along the journey of life, Lord. We thank you that every day we can walk boldly in this life, knowing that, again, because of you, because of what you've done in the empty tomb and the, the empty cross, Lord, we have hope, we have strength, we have confidence in our future. Lord, with that in mind, we pray for all those who are on our prayer page. So many who are struggling with healing and needs in their health. Lord, who are seeking that intervention, who are seeking that prayer for healing. 
Lord, we pray that if it's your will, that you would bring healing. Bring it powerfully. Bring it in a way that they, that they see you at work and, and cannot even doubt the, the fact that you are doing something amazing in their lives. And Lord, if it's not your will that they would be healed here on this earth, again, we pray that, that you would be at work in their heart, strengthening their faith, leading them into your perspective. And Lord, that many lives would be touched by their journey. Lord, we pray especially for those, again, on our prayer page listed and, and so many who are not as well. Be with them. Certainly use us as your hands and your feet here, Lord, to support them and encourage them on this journey. Lord, we continue to pray, too, for, for healing in our nation, for healing in the Twin Cities especially, with so much unrest, so much struggle, so much loss, so much confusion and, and, and just hurt, Lord. We again, in your time and in your way, Lord, use us and use our brothers and sisters around the community and use the leaders, Lord, in this place to, to bring about peace and restoration and healing. And Lord, we know it takes time, but help us to take steps forward in the right direction. Bless those who, who again, are in, in those positions of leadership and decisions, Lord. May your hand be on them. We again thank you too, Lord, for of the transition ahead for Pastor Duncan and his family for, for travels to Minnesota and, and settling in. And Lord, we just pray that as they uh, arrive here and, and have those initial days, that you would bless them, strengthen them as a family, uh, be present with, with the, both uh, Pastor Duncan and his wife and kids, Lord, each of them, that whatever they might be wrestling with in the change, that you would bring them peace and connection and, and they would turn to you, Lord. Certainly bless us as we begin to, to transition and begin to step forward, uh, Lord, in this time uh, here at Trinity. Again, Lord, I continue to, to certainly lift up my own family in the midst of that and, and thank you for your, your blessing and seeking your clarity as we journey forward in, in our discernment time here. Lord, there is so much happening in our world. There's so much happening in each of our lives, in our family's lives, in our community. Lord, we lift it all to you, knowing that, that you are with us, that you are present, that you invite us to, to seek you, to seek your, your strength, your comfort, all that we need, and Lord, to see this world through your perspective. Bless us this morning as we lift these prayers to you in the prayer that you've taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we prepare to go out today, go with the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. We sing together our final song.